Hello everyone and welcome to episode 90 of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast. This is Anthony Samaroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com. In February of this year, I did something that some people would think is absolutely crazy. I went to a retreat and I fasted drinking only water for 21 days. And then I went on a two week refeeding program where I only ate fruit and some salad. And upon completing the fast, I posted in a couple of places asking if anyone had any questions about it. And I got tons of really good questions. I thought it would be better to answer them now with the hindsight of a couple of months than to do this video earlier. Also, my travel schedule has not allowed me to prioritise this until now. So, one of the first questions I think that's good to ask is someone asked what is what was your purpose in fasting well fasting has multiple health benefits and as well as other kinds of benefits arguably in terms of your consciousness or your uh, resilience just knowing that you fasted for three weeks might um, help you feel more confident that uh, if you ever get in trouble that you can you have the power to go without food and um, you discover that you're stronger than you ever thought you were. You can handle things that you didn't think that you could handle. You might feel more com competent, confident taking on challenges. Some people believe there's spiritual benefits reportedly. Um, Jesus, Buddha, Lao Tzu and Muhammad all fasted for 40 days, doubling my 21 days. Those were not the main reasons although there are some reasons that I think uh, I did maybe benefit in those ways, for sure. I think the main reason I wanted to do it was to increase my energy levels. I've never been a really super high energy person since I can remember, and uh, a lot of little things that other people find easy are quite um, emotionally and psychologically draining for me. Um, so one of the significant things was getting more energy. I also have quite a sensitive digestive system. Uh, certain foods would tend to um, cause me to get eczema or other related GI related <laughs> conditions that get other symptoms. And there, if there's one way to help your digestive tract repair itself, it's to give it a break. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't know that I was sensitive to gluten and dairy, so there, was, there wasn't so much awareness of it. So years and years of putting food in my body that didn't really agree with it would have exacerbated the condition. And that probably ties into the energy levels as well. Everything is related to everything else. Another thing is based on my understanding, the best way to rehydrate your body in a really deep level is to not put food in it because our cells breathe just the same as we breathe and they create cellular waste. I'm sorry, I'm going to put the dog out because it's making loud sounds. That was easy. So um, what happens is your cells reportedly get a film of cellular waste around it, which makes it harder for them or Heart or impossible for them to admit water or nutrients as easily as it would be if we were living a more natural lifestyle, a natural diet with lots of high water content foods. Most people don't eat, so most people eat lots of dry food and you can't necessarily compensate for that by drinking water alone because water just goes from the, the, the wall of your large intestine straight into the body, whereas food goes all the way through the tube. So all the dry food we eat, the toast, the corn chips, they're like a sponge taking water out of your body. 75% um, of your poops should be water. So if you eat anything that's less than 75% water, then you're dehydrating your body, which is like the importance of high water content, foods, fruits, salads, um, to the, the health of di the digestive tract. Colon cancer is the largest growing cancer, some people say partly because of all the dry food we've been eating. So you need to give you, so by 
drinking only water and I got so freaking thirsty in this fast. Um, so you're drinking like 12 cups of water a day um, and my body knew it needed it. So that's to wash out all the cell poop from around the cells so that they can then admit that water. Think about the diffusion idea. Things go from a area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So if the cell's dehydrated, it can't take in um, it can't take in intelligent nutrients or or what um, so uh, if so you can you can understand the principle of that so over the course so you're basically cleaning your body on the cellular level giving your digestive tract a break um, and one of the one of the things is I'll talk a little bit more about rehydrating old hard or sticky material that is in your digestive tract from years of eating these um, foods you know uh, I mentioned about gaining water from food predators usually bite a uh, prey on the throat and drink all of its blood so they get most of their water from food every every animal gets most of their water from food not from drinking water apart from human beings so that's and that's not to say that you shouldn't drink water if you're thirsty you should drink water you should probably drink more water than you're drinking because a lot of people lose the sensitivity um, to dehydration so this all obviously um, ties into the increase of increase in energy um, and you know having a clean body is meant to help you heal in all ways so I wanted to see what healing I was capable of and also I want to have a remarkable life I want to do amazing crazy things like hardly anyone would have the balls to go and fast for three weeks and then just drink um, just eat fruit and salad for two weeks afterwards so to have a remarkable crazy w wonderful rich experience of life that's another reason as you may hear I'm, I've been struggling with my voice a little bit um, I, I, I don't have uh, the ability to, to speak for as long as I want every day without it going and that's led to a retreat from activities especially now you know I'm a professional speaker uh, I was having to make trade-offs between going out with my friends or working more because I use my voice for work so I'm still hoping to help heal that as well and that was another factor and the timing was just good I was already doing a yoga retreat in Mexico not quite sure what I wanted to do next and my mo fasting mentor Lauren Lockman said in one of his videos that he was he needed to raise money so he was offering the retreats at 20% discount it was just a hop a skip and a jump from where I was in Mexico and it seemed to be like a good time for me to take this step to invest in myself and give my my body a chance to clean itself out only the body heals itself and um, the idea is that 50% of our energy goes to digestion so when you turn the digestive system off all that energy can just go to scraping healing your body eats all the dead dying cells it eats parasites it eats bacteria that you don't need and um, scours the body for anything it doesn't need and burns it up for energy so there's some of the many reasons my many purposes for and fasting for so have you tried shorter fasts or did you dive right in what is going on yes I did I did do shorter fasts. my first fast was five and a half days then seven and um, then eleven and a half and also every set so often I've done two or three days um, especially if I've been away on holiday or something like that and eating really bad food I know that, or I get eczema I know the best way to clear up is to just give the whole digestive system a rest and do a fast for two or three days um, <laughs> it's supposed to be the longer you do it the the more cumulative the results I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute how much water did you drink right okay this is important stuff that's a really good question the body needs oxygen to bond with toxins and water to wash them out right nothing leaves your body without water and oxygen that is the means or that's the the primary means of detoxification of the body removal of materials that the body doesn't need so i drank a minimum of four liters of, wa of water a day eight glasses sipped about an hour apart and that rose to like five or six liters 
in 10 or 12 glasses later in the fats as the process deep deepened. So some people found it hard to drink that much water on the retreat, but um, I got really thirsty. Uh, as I said, people have no idea how dehydrated they are, they are, and the water really needs that water. The body really needs the water to mobilize things and move them out. Um, and so that's, a, that's an important question. What kind of water did you drink? It was all spring water. That's the, the best water you can drink from, from, a, from a spring that was on the premises of the retreat. Anything else on water? Did you lose weight? Well, yes, of course I lost weight. I started at around 112 pounds, 50 and a half kilograms, and I fell to a low of 94 pounds, uh, 43 kilograms. Um, I don't think that's a lot to lose in 21 days. I lost most of it in the first week and hardly any in the last week. So I lost less each week. Um, I put it on pretty quick. I put it back on pretty quickly. A lot of people think if you're slender, you shouldn't fast. Um, or, or if you ha find it hard to put on weight. That's not actually true. A lot of people are too slender because they've got problems with absorption. And since the body heals itself while you fast, it often corrects absorption problems. You know, there might be stuff in your digestive system that um, that is uh, stopping you from absorbing things, you know, you might have all sorts of functionality problems. The body heals itself in the order it thinks um, is the highest priority. If you're working on a brain aneurysm, you wouldn't even know it. You could drop dead the next day. So it might heal that first. And then um, you wouldn't even know. You'd be like, oh, I came here to cure this condition, but nothing's happening there. You don't know um, what your body's doing with your organs. So um, you can't see your organs, so you don't know what it's cleaning out. But it gets round to things in its own order. And uh, some people find that after fasting, they um, they go to a much healthier weight if they're underweight. Um, personally, I'm not under, I wasn't underweight when I started. I was around the green zone, the, the complete center of the ideal weight for my height. And I went to the bottom end of the green zone. I didn't go underweight. I, I, I was, uh, by the end of the fast, I was still within the range of the ideal weight for my height, but just barely. So, um, I've gained the weight back and then some. The then some isn't because, as some people think, oh, if you fast, it scares your body and then you'll really hold on to fast. It's because I've been <laughs> traveling America, eating too much crap. <laughs> um, and also, I'm just a novelty seeker. So if I go to somewhere new and there's a whole bunch of uh, restaurants that I haven't been to, I want to try everything. I want to, so I like eating all sorts of <laughs> weird foods that I know that are not ideal for my body when I'm traveling. But it's the kind of thing where, um, I, I, I mean, I've got a little bit of a belly now, which I didn't have before, but I'd hap but I know if I get a couple of weeks to myself, I can take it off again. I could fast or I could just, you know, go back to eating fruit and vegetables for a week or two. And um, I'm sure I will. <laughs> go back to the weight I want, which I would say is 52 kilograms, because I was 52 kilograms for most of my life. Um, am I too underweight to fast? Almost certainly not. If you're not ma dangerously, dangerously malnourished or below your weight, um, or seriously underweight, I should say, then you will probably not be too underweight to fast. Um... You're not meant to do more than eight days fasting without supervision. Uh, you can do eight days without a serious risk of harm to yourself. Almost everyone can. Most people have enough reserves to last them for two to three months if they live in a Western country. I mean it. Sometimes nutritional deficiencies are corrected in a fast. That's been observed before. Well, how can you correct nutritional deficiencies if you're not eating anything? Well, the nutrients are in your body, but they're not in your cells your cells aren't admitting them. So when you fast, you get rid of all the crap and the nutrients have an easier um, time getting into your cells. So that's how. So uh, speaking about the scrape going deeper, 
um, one of my teachers told, told me that any detoxification program should be at least three weeks. So if you wanna go on a juice fast or something like that, if you do a week, that's great, but it's just practice. The reason why is in the first week, your body um, cleans your fluids, your lymph, your blood, your saliva, all the fluids. In the second week, it goes down to the organ level. So you're, you're clearing out your kidneys, your liver, um, stomach, whatever, your internal organs. To get down to the cellular level, the real magic happens in the th third week. So the benefit of doing this is not like um, one plus one plus one. You really get the deep scrape in that third week. So lots of people try all sorts of detoxification programs and they get ill again pretty soon afterwards. The reason why is if you want enduring success, you need to go down to the cellular level and get those cells cleaned. So you're probably not too underweight to fast, but consult the relevant authorities and do your research before you jump into anything. Let's see. Did the hunger eventually go away or were you hungry every day? Day three, as typical I've found in fasts, first day is the worst day. Second day is okay, but still cravings. Day three onwards, I didn't get hungry. Now, sometimes I crave food psychologically. Oh, it would be so nice to have this thing or that thing. In pure imagination, the, we like talking about eating on the fast because we, we just like talking to each other about the things we might like to eat. It was more of a fantasy, but it wasn't hunger. Like, if you if I start eating and the phone rings and I have to answer it, then I feel like, oh my God, I'm so fucking hungry. Don't phone me. I want to kill you. Get off the fucking phone. You know, I just want to finish my freaking meal like an animal getting interrupted when they eat. So uh, I've never experienced anything that intense fasting. The physiological sense, because your digestive system goes off. So you stop craving. Your body wants to clean itself. My fasting mentor told me, that you will not get hungry when you fast unless A, your body's completely clean and it doesn't need to clean out anymore. Very unlikely, if like me, you're 35 years on a Western or roughly Western diet, um, or two, you're, you're, you, you actually crave nutrient, you need nutrients, you're, 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 you're starving. Then your body will get hungry again and will prompt you to stop the fast. So, so yeah, the thing is, the problem is people try shorter fasts of one day or two days and they think, oh, I could never last a week because the first day is so hard. But actually they're getting a completely false perception thinking it's going to be a lot harder than it is because the first day is the worst day. Um, any headaches? People do sometimes get headaches. I didn't get any personally. And headaches are, you know, they're a detoxification symptom chemicals or cellular wastes are coming out of your cells and they're going to leave the body body via the bloodstream when they hit the bloodstream and um, your organs go oh i don't like these chemicals so you um you get headaches which uh, by the way is the main reason why people overeat <laughs> or, <laughs> or eat too often it's because as soon as they stop eating the body starts detoxifying cellular wastes and they think, oh gosh, I'm really hungry, but actually they've just got an addictive craving because they're trying to stop the detoxification process. When did you have your last poop on the fast? Right, now, down to the important stuff. Talking shit. I had a evacuation, as we like to call them, on day eight. Can you believe it? That was my last evacuation. Nothing, nothing after that until I started refeeding. Um... When I started refeeding, I didn't poop until the fourth day. And it's interesting because I drank only water for three weeks and my refeeding diet was fruit. It was papaya, watermelon, very high water content foods. And guess what? My poops were dry. How's that possible? Well, that stuff was there in the digestive system for months, maybe years, dry. The body couldn't get enough water to mobilize it through while it was eating. 
So over the course of fasting for three weeks, the body was trying to rehydrate that old hard material and move it through the digestive system. Then once you started to ingest the fiber that comes along with the papaya, the watermelon, mango, you get the fiber. The fiber dra dragged the old hard material out the tube, which is one of the reasons why probably I've had a lot more energy since fasting than I did before fasting. One of the reasons. Did you feel like you were dying the last few days? You know, I was getting very weak the last few days. I, I think, um, I, I did not enjoy walking from my accommodation down to the lounge the last three or four days. And I kind of put that down to my stature. Um, but I didn't feel like I was dying. I never felt like I was dying. It, I just, I, I, you know, if I could say the first week was fine and I didn't know why people who'd been there longer than me were complaining about it, being bored and stuff. The second week, I fucking hated the place. And then the third week, I thought a peacefulness came upon me and I thought, you know what, this isn't too shabby. I basically have a week to lie in a hammock and listen to some great novels and audiobooks and I should just enjoy it while it lasts. So the the third week was good and and despite being weak it was like i knew the end was approaching so i was happy um where are you able to function and do basic stuff well i don't know what basic stuff is i was able to function but i really couldn't be bothered doing anything i couldn't even be bothered um writing or anything like that i did organize some of my ideas and i meditated and i journaled a little bit but you know what you should really be resting when you fast anyway it's like um you know you should be resting to give your body a chance to do its job it's just the mind always wants to be doing something so there's another thing that you can you can learn to come to terms with is your frustration with an activity um how were my energy levels i think i've answered that they were pretty low but i wasn't bedridden or anything uh what was your diet like before the fast yeah it varies quite a lot because i've been traveling since october when i was at home in scotland i really liked to do um, a salad every day for for one of my meals and another meal that was just one fruit like just apples or just oranges or just bananas because that's really really good because it's it keeps it super simple in your digestive system and not having to synthesize chemicals for all sorts of different foods that are very different in their structure so I didn't do that every day but I did it many days and obviously that was great, you know, more energy, no symptoms, you know, my eczema would clear up if I was, if I was observing that, you know, third meal, evening meal, whatever, wild card, you know, I'd usually have a cooked meal, um, so that was a good diet, but on the road, I've been, I, I, I have to try everything, so I've been eating a lot of junk food, uh, no, and, uh, but I'm vegetarian, so that's one thing, I, I, not, uh, like, I like cheese, but it doesn't agree with me, so I kind of try and avoid too much dairy and gluten as well. So what I think is ideal for me is really, like, um, fruits, vegetables, salad, legumes, beans, you know, chickpeas, lentils, um, maybe rice, but grains, you know, against the grain. Grains are taking some flack in the media now, and maybe some eggs, you know, th those are... Th simple foods that are easy to digest i i prefer um i notice the difference when i put in the gluten so i think i have a relatively good diet most of the time but i need to because my digestive system can't cope with lots of rich food and i get symptoms so did you miss chewing i never really thought about chewing um as it went on i did as i said we fantasized about food for the joy of eating but I wouldn't say I got hungry. Um, 
how how did you he, my friend Ian says would you consider doing a 21 day water fast if you weren't on a retreat um you're not really meant to I would think of doing it um I really want to go back and do another one because I feel like I just got a taste of how <laughs> a taste how ironic I feel like I just got a taste of how good I would feel in a clean body like I felt so amazing and clear-headed and energetic after a few days of refeeding after a week of refeeding I felt amazing I was so inspired I was writing so much um and that's just a taste of how because you know 35 years on planet earth breathing in pollution there's all sorts of chemicals in the tap water there is um, pesticides and herbicides in the food there's all you know it takes and then there's all the crap that we eat you know we choose to eat processed foods and stuff like that so you're not going to clear everything out in a th three weeks so i'm keen to do it again i would i would consider going and getting a nice uh airbnb somewhere sunny and just um doing it on my own i'd love to do the three weeks but you know i i, I my preference would be to do maybe a week or 10 days on my own and then do the end of it supervised uh, uh my my set fasting supervisor doesn't um really allow people to do that because he's like whatever you want to do in those first 10 days you shouldn't be doing because you should be resting but it would make it easier to take a week or less out of day-to-day -day life and be able to see some clients that first week that would be sure um but i'm keen to do it again somehow or another when i when i when i'm able to do that probably in the winter time and uh, my fasting supervisor says if you observe an ideal diet which i don't and most people don't don't you should only need two to four fasts of three weeks ish or maybe a little bit more um to, if you want to to clean out the body he thinks um how did you break the fast that's an important question as i said i went on a refeeding regime so first day five very very tiny portions of papaya two hours apart the next day four meals of twice the size you could have watermelon um, or glasses of coconut water the then three meals a, so then three meals a day twice the size of that and he did for the rest of the week i think and or anyway I, eventually we got to a portion size that was big you know more than you need to eat and it was all for it so as we went on we could have like um mango which has less water content or tangerines or something but the first the first few days they're like watermelon papaya or coconut water because they're the highest water content so then there was a fruit festival we went on a fruit there was a fruit festival at the retreat and then there was all sorts of fancy stuff like raw sushi and a lasagna made out of salad and all, all sorts of crazy foods which was a bit rich i think probably you know could have would have benefited more for doing another week on the simple stuff before doing that but you know again my fancy mentor personally he says you should be at least six weeks on fruit and salad the salad came in at the end of the week so not for the first six days um and the reason for that is you've just spent three weeks rehydrating old hard dry sticky material in your digestive tract and you need the water and fiber to move it along to to pull it to pull it out if you go straight back to eating dry food even beans rice never mind toast then you're going to lose at least half of the potential benefits maybe maybe getting rid of old hard dry material is the greatest benefit of doing a long-term fast because that's the hardest one to attain you can't get that in a week-long fast maybe so um in order so that's why he's very clear on don't just have just have fruit just have fruit and some salad uh, as a refeeding regime because you just don't want to after you've gone through all that work 
lose the benefit or the potential benefit of moving that stuff out. And as I told you, my stools were dry. How is that possible after three weeks of only drinking water and then eating high water content food? It's only possible if that stuff was there for years and needed moving along. How did you feel after? Well, yeah, as I said, probably the best I felt that I remember. Still lots of psychological stuff coming up to deal with and I was dealing with that, but typically I was feeling like, yeah, just more energetic, more clear headed, really good mood, gregarious, cause um, happy to speak to people, mm, easily myself around people, making people laugh. Carefree, I would say, I felt carefree. How did it affect your clarity and consciousness? Oh, I really wish that I could remember this a little bit better. As I said, week two seemed like it was going on forever. Week three, my mood stand started to improve and I felt very special and uplifted. And I did, you know, there was not much energy to do stuff. So I had a lot of meditations and I was looking at various psychological things, um, grudges I was holding or unfinished conflicts that I wanted to finish. I was going through my wounds from the past and because what else, yeah, what else I got to do? Trying to feel my feelings. But yeah, I would say I did feel like spiritual and fieldy sometimes like, ooh, this is spooky, spooky psycho spiritual psychological stuff was going on. Um, I guess it's a personal thing. It's hard to communicate that stuff. Are you usually active? And if so, were you able to exercise during the fast? Okay. I was physically active. Um, I go through periods. If I land somewhere where I'm, where I can, I try and go to a yoga class or exercise class four or five days a week. But I've been traveling, so it's hard to do that. You you really shouldn't be exercising during a fast you should be resting all your energy should be going to healing and detoxing so um it, you can stretch light stretching is fine um especially if you feel crooks in your body you know because how what you're doing when you stretch you're allowing the blood to get into the nooks and crannies and clean out things and um, you're allowing the the water to get into your cells and in your in your muscles which are tight when you um, stretch. But you know, if you sweat, then you're burning through electrolytes, you're, you're, you're not getting in many calories, so you, so you shouldn't really be doing exercise on a fast. If it's one or two days, you can get away with that. But you should save your energy for later if you're doing something longer. Is it dangerous? Oh, I should have answered this question earlier. Right, people don't know this. Fasting is a natural process that all animals do when they're sick or injured. A uh, mouse will just go and sip water for days if it needs to. Cats, same. Dogs don't, no, no, which ones? Dogs will just sip water. Cats can't fast for very long. Only three or five days, dogs can. Um, when you're a kid, when you get sick, you don't want to eat. And that is natural. Um, so then your mum comes along and says, you need to eat to get your strength back. And she's wrong. <laughs> you don't need to eat to get your strength back. You need to be resting and just drinking water so that your body cannot focus on digesting, but just focus on getting rid of the pathogens and uh, restoring your body to health. Um, everyone knows that Hippocrates said, let your food be your medicine and let your medicine be your food, but they don't know the next bit where he said, to eat while sick is to feed your sickness. This is ancient wisdom. Before the allopathic model of medication came to be the only considered medicine, there were all sorts of ways of treating people before, and physicians would very often suggest fasting. But, you know, you can't sell any drugs when you fast people. Um, so, 
it's not dangerous unless you're seriously malnourished or uh, dangerously underweight. Um, so again, there's lots of benefits. Why did I do three weeks? There's lots of benefits that are impossible to get from any number of short fasts. If you want to starve off parasites, mold or fungus, which everyone has in the body to varying degrees, they're not going to die off in a day or two, period. You know, that's going to take time. Repairing the digestive tract takes time. And as I said, mobilizing, getting enough water in over weeks to rehydrate old hard sticky material in the alimentary canal, uh, which is going to lower the absorption of nutrients and cause all sorts of um, problems from physical problems to low moods and um, to digest to food intolerances um, like I can I shouldn't really but you know I can get away with eating a lot more crap since fasting without getting symptoms than I could before fasting now <laughs> I shouldn't eat that food but the thing is I've got a much longer buffer because my system's clean relative to what it was before so it might sound wacky to most people but then most people are going to die of preventable chronic di diseases. That's just a fact. Most people die. 70% of medical cases are um, from lifestyle related illnesses. So I'm not going to listen to most people who are unhealthy or they're going to die of diseases that can be reversed. I can't tell you how many, well, the, the, the big ones, heart disease, cancer, stroke, um, Believe it or not, well, you don't have to believe it. You, my, my fasting supervisor has seen these conditions. Um, well, the, you can't really reverse a heart attack after, or a stroke after it's happened. But the thing, the indicators that people are going to get these, like high blood pressure almost always is cured by sufficient fasting. It's easy to do with a fast, but you have to fast long enough and properly. Um, so... Three to four days to get into ketosis and um, then the, the body starts eating fat instead of muscle primarily so but you know it would be better to do one seven day fast than three three day fasts the deeper part deepest part of the process happens around the 10 or 11 day mark according to my mentor who's been fasting people for 30 years or more so the second week is twice as beneficial as the first week and the third week is twice as beneficial as the second week and the first hand evidence that fasting this long is safe, well, I wasn't hungry, I didn't get hungry. Um, again, the, the, uh, I wish I had some examples of the, uh, written down of some of the stories that I had, but yeah, I mean, there was people there who were overweight, obviously, that just wanted to lose weight. But there was people there to, re to reverse all sorts of conditions. And over the decades, my, um, my fasting mentor has seen people who were diagnosed terminal have their conditions re um, re reversed by fasting. What about interfasting sweet cheeks, says Spencer Feldes. Intermittent fasting also known as eating the way that humans ate through most of history is definitely advised as a lifestyle choice. I don't really think that anything less than 24, 36 days could be considered fasting. It's not, it's, but that's maybe a little bit um, snobbish. Through most of history, humans would go for long periods of time without food. That's just a fact, you know. It would take ages before you... I, I pronounce his name wrong. It's pr pronounced Spencer Files. When you're a hunter-gatherer, you might go days or weeks, uh, probably not weeks, but you might go days without eating. So that, gave, that meant they had lots of time to clear out their bodies of crap. And they also didn't eat as much crap and there also wasn't as much pollution in the water or the air. However, there were parasites and things like that. And the conditions were harsh. So intermittent fasting is just normal. Well, it should be normal. You know, I don't, I, if I'm at home, I don't eat until 11, 12, 1 o'clock, uh, my first meal. Um, then I, uh, I might have a coffee beforehand, which technically is cheating. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I was in Scotland, I would, I would wait until 11 to even have my coffee. And then I'd 
uh, no, I had to wait before that because I needed to take some supplements that you can only take in a, some probiotics that you only take in a empty stomach. So take them, wait for 15, 20 minutes, then have my coffee or tea um, and then wait for half an hour after that before eating because it's ideal not to eat after drinking fluids because fluids, um, what's the word, dilute your digestive acid. So the, the, the fluids, so, so it's better not to eat 20 minutes after drinking and not to drink 40 minutes after eating. Luckily, I don't like drinking with dinner anyway. I do, I've never been able to drink um, and eat at the same time. So I definitely recommend people intermittent fast. I would do it like maybe five days a week when I was in Scotland. And then, and then you know, maybe two, two nights a week I was uh, out at a bar um, working on a book or something like that. And I'd, I'd order something, a drink or something to eat. So absolutely, intermittent fasting is excellent. Um, the, the, I don't really think it's fasting, but it's, um, it's normal. It's how people should live and it has health benefits. Obviously you won't get the health benefits of a long-term water fast because an intermittent fa known amount of intermittent fasting is going to starve off parasites or mold or fungus or anything like that. So, but it's still useful. A fast is the, no supplements. Okay. No supplements. I didn't take electrolytes or minerals or anything. Why? Because a fast is defined as no calories and no nutrients. I'm sorry, if you drink coffee, you're not technically fasting. If you take anything, you risk the possibility of getting the digestive tract running again, and that will compromise the benefits. You will still get some benefits, of course. Of course, if you only drink coffee for a week and don't eat anything, you're still gonna get the benefit of clearing out your digestive tract, but you might be losing out on 50% of the benefits, hypothetically, and you're, uh, you're, it takes the same amount of time. So why compromise? Why? Also, it makes it harder to fast, because when you take anything, you get hungry. Uh, uh, someone told me they went on the fast mimicking diet and they were like I did it for a week and it was great afterwards but I was really hungry I was like yeah because you keep on running your digestive system so you get hungry if you take nothing but water after two or three days your digestive system completely goes to sleep and you don't get hungry so I would not I think if you're going to do it you might as well go hardcore like sure experiment with a cup of coffee or something like that at first to experiment and see what you like. You can try the bone broth thing. Um, the reason why I think that people benefit from the bone broth is um, there's a lot of minerals in, in animal, but I'm a vegetarian, so I don't do that stuff. So they're getting minerals and stuff like that. But I, I personally don't think that animal products are the best way to get minerals. But hey, uh, anything that's better than what you're doing is a step in the right direction. So no electrolytes, no vitamins, uh, nothing, no compromises, just water. There would have been some minerals in the water and I was happy with that. I was happy to do it hardcore. And just in case, I wouldn't want to risk losing out on any benefits, so I didn't take any compromises. Um, and I snobbishly say that compromising isn't exactly fasting. So, he, oh, what about dry fasting? You should never, you should never dry fast. Most people are extremely dehydrated at the cellular level, as I spoke about before, and no amount of drinking water while you're eating will solve that. Um, my fasting mentor checks everyone's hydration every single day, and he says the most dehydrated people were people who tried dry fasting before. There is never a benefit of dehydrating the body. The body needs oxygen to bond with toxins and water to flush them out. So you should be drinking that minimum of four liters of water a day, eight glasses sipped one hour apart. Of course, there's only a limit to how much water your kidneys and liver should process at a time. So there's no point drinking four liters of water all at once. You'll just get 
you'll just need to pee and you'll pee out electrolytes and other, th other micronutrients that you don't want to. So space the drinks out. A lot of people report that they feel better when they take minerals or when they dry fast. Uh, yeah, of course you do because you're not detoxing, idiot. Of course you're going to feel better. The body's not going to detox if you're not drinking enough water. So if you dry fast, you feel better than when you dry, um, you um, you drink water. You should feel better because the toxins aren't going into your bloodstream because your body's trying to hang hang on to the water. So that might be also the reason why people feel better when they cheat, taking coffee or whatever the cheats are these days, bone broth, because. They are not detoxing as strongly as someone who's only drinking water. Could you have gone longer? I probably could have gone a few days longer, um, but I was getting weak and I didn't like it. I didn't like walking to the living room. Um, I, I've got a few extra pounds now so compared to when I started last time. So if I keep those, if I don't decide to take them off, Maybe I'll do better in the last few days next time. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that was because I was detoxing hard, that I was weak, or if 18 days would have been better for me. Who knows? Who knows? There's no way to compare it. So, uh, who knows? But anyway... It didn't do me any harm. I think, I feel like if it had been 19 days rather than 21 days, it would have been easier for me to take exercise sooner and start um, putting stuff back on. I don't know. Anyway, it was it was a good experience. We'll find out next time, I suppose. I'll, I'll compare it. How do you keep from making the body then not store everything you eat post-fast? As far as I can tell, it's a myth that you cling to fast fat as a reaction to fasting. I think, as I said before, people who are too lean can actually put on weight after a fast because of a correction of assimilation problems. Um, someone said they eat little portions through the day. The idea that it's good to eat small meals through the day has been thoroughly debunked. That was a fad. It's better to eat one or two big meals than snack through the day. Why? Because your body needs to clean itself out. Every time you eat, you're setting your digestive system running. So when you're really concentrating on work or really well into what you're doing, you don't get hungry. You might have noticed that before. That's normal. Just one point in focus. We focus and we're at our best on an empty stomach. So a couple of hours after eating, we, we can go down into work mode. So just keep remembering 50% of our energy goes to digestion. So I, I think that that's a myth, that the body clings to fat after fasting. This is what they used to think maybe in the 90s or 80s when we didn't have internet and everything was just like mimetic um, through word, word of mouth and, you know, pop psychology and stuff like that. All the best reparations in your body will happen on an empty stomach as... We've discussed there's lots of data coming out on intermittent fasting and how good that is for you. A lot of people having a meal at 11 a.m. and then their last meal at 7 p.m., you know, doing that for ages, weeks, months, most days, you'll see a profound benefit. Um, Spencer Files said, I achieved the best physical state of my life when I intermittent fast for a year. And lots of your friends have tried it as well. I'm sure they say good things about it. Ooh. How do you deal with nausea or acid reflux? I've tried fasting many times, but I always quit because it gets physically unbearable. My guess is that's a severe detoxification symptom. Nausea is normal. Lots of people get it when they're fasting. And I think it's because cellular wastes and toxins are going into your bloodstream and they're making you go, ooh. You should lie down and rest and sip water. So, so you're right to feel nauseous if crap's going into your bloodstream. Now, the acid reflux, yeah, uh, you know, that could be unpleasant. You can try something like juicing for three days. I don't mean the, um, 
yet to prepare go eat have a nice easy transition or just have fruit and salad for a few days before fasting um so that you've got a an easy entry into it. i put this um question to my fasting mentor and he suggests eating fruit mono meals and salads for as long as you're willing to before the fast um uh, but he also said he supervised people who had acid reflux and they just they just bear through it bore, bear through it they just stiff upper lip and they went through it anyway um so should i should i practice yeah i mean i don't know what practice is but the the danger of practicing is you only do two days at a time and you think it's really super hard and you get a false view of how hard it is because you think every day is going to be as hard as the first two days that's just not the case so but yeah i mean like i said i i didn't practice uh sorry i, I i'd had some practice um ian asked what's my longest fast in scotland before i was on a retreat 11 and a half days i did which by the way was amazing and like again spiritual benefits from that like clear-headedness yeah, it was pretty hard to walk down the street by the end of it uh, and take a bus into town and then back I, I got tired carrying a backpack but i shouldn't be I, technically by day 11 i shouldn't have been carrying a backpack a heavy backpack down a big long street i should have been resting my fasting mentor said the reason why i was tired on day 11 was not because i was out of energy or out of reserves from not eating it's because the detox had got deep and my body was trying to mobilize crap out of my body so that stuff happening would have made me feel tired and drowsy and low on energy did i answer this question how how did you approach eating again after the fast so it, as i said it's critically important how you refeed so high water content foods like watermelon or papaya to start off with as things go on you can introduce mangoes tangerines and what have you and uh, then maybe then maybe salad um my fasting mentor is really big on mono mono meals so we got just papaya or just watermelon or just mango or just guanabana or just or just or just one fruit per meal so that's to keep it simple so that your body doesn't have to engineer tons of different enzymes for complicated food so it's the high water content plus the fiber which helps pull stuff that you don't want in your digestive tract out of your digestive tract <clears throat> does fruit not raise your sugar levels that's a good one does people when I say I, I think that fruit mono meals are great for your health, the keto people say, but what about all that sugar? We want to stay in ketosis. Fruit doesn't actually raise your glycemic index typically, as long as it's eaten in its complete form with all the fiber intact. There was a guy, a fruitarian guy, who went on YouTube to prove this. He ate as many bananas as he can to and then to to demonstrate this by banana being a very sweet fruit um to measure his blood sugar and there is nothing of this spike that um the keto people are afraid will happen if they say have blueberries too many blueberries or uh, or whatever fruit that they're they're worried about fruit's the natural diet for human beings i mean look at our hands they're very convenient for pulling fruits off trees for um the, uh, the idea that eating fruit is bad for you is crazy. Absolutely fucking insane. Bat shit crazy. You, we look a lot more like animals who are kitted out by nature to eat fruit than we do to eat animals. I mean, all other animals that eat animals have claws or sharp teeth that you could actually bite an animal with and strip it down to the carcass. Of course, eating its organs, which what most people who eat meat don't do, you know um anymore which is bad which is a shame because that's where all the good stuff is the minerals the, the high water content and stuff like that then they cook it to evaporate off more water so it's going down your digestive tract dry 
drying out your system, not as much as bread or corn chips, of course, but there's still a dehydrating effect. So if you eat dry food, dry fruits, of course, yeah, that's a lot of, that's going to be too much sugar. That's going to increase your glycemic index. It's up to you whether you want the vitamins, you want the trade-off of vitamins for, um, for a spike in your sugar. Um, the, the, probably best eating in their full form because then you've got the fiber and the water to balance out the amount of sugar so it's got a slow burn of sugar the the, the sugar is let off in a slow form that doesn't um increase your say um glycemic because because the glycemic i get confused between glycemic index and a glycemic load that that doesn't make me sound like i um i remember but uh I, I, that doesn't sound make me sound as credible, admittedly, but put it this way, I was satisfied with the evidence when I learned about this, and I did read both sides of the argument, so, um, so I didn't feel like I had to uh, remember which way around. So, the, the sugar in fruit is not the same as the sugar in a donut. <laughs> Sometimes we just need to... Uh, <laughs> like basic common sense come on guys like your you the sugar in a chocolate bar is not the sugar in the same as the sugar in an apple if you eat um if you eat the whole apple with the fiber and the water you shouldn't get a spike in your blood sugar um uh, uh, it shouldn't be harmful for you that's a that's a good food to eat it's nice and simple to digest it passes through your system very quickly and um, which means it's not going to rot in there you, um it's and it's going to put the the amount of energy that fruit takes to break down is going to give you good bang for your buck compared to really sophisticated complex carbs you know and which the keto people don't like either um you got that like slow release i i'm a big fan of fruit your mum was right an apple a day keeps the doctor away Okay, so that was tons. Thank you so much for so many amazing questions. Thank you, Facebook. And I hope you really enjoyed this video or podcast if you're listening to it. Good one.